Today, the boys are heading 260 miles southeast of Conwy to the outskirts of the historic Suffolk market town of Bury St Edmunds, where Drew's heard of an enigmatic venture that might offer up some magic for his mix. So today, T, we are off to meet Mark Copeland, and he runs something called the Insect Circus. <laughs> so yeah. half of that, whatever you want, but that is it. It sounds like fun. So we genuinely don't know what we're going to see. No, but insects. In a circus. In a circus, yeah. But more than that, I can't tell you. The cathedral town of Bury St Edmunds is named after King Edmund, who, before St George, was the original patron saint of medieval England. The Abbey of St Edmund, housing relics of the king, was for hundreds of years an important destination for pilgrims before its dissolution in the 16th century. Today, just a few miles away, is a destination housing relics of a very different kind, a shrine to an extraordinary fantasy world created by artist, collector and ringmaster of his touring circus of giant insects, Mark Copeland. This idea popped up of an insect circus because I'd seen a photograph of elephants on the, on the back of a lorry and it occurred to me, these elephants, I can make them snails. They're like mini beast elephants. And then it occurred to me that wasps and tigers were very similar and this whole idea tumbled out. So I thought I'd have a touring gallery. It occurred to me, if I made an entertainment to go in in this exhibition, then I could actually charge people to come and look at it rather than sell, have to sell anything. My interest in circus was quite big, so I amassed a kind of collection of bits and bobs I couldn't resist buying, which I think other people should appreciate rather than being just stuck away in a cupboard, which is where they've been for many years, lots of them. Hello. Drew, how are you? How are you Hi. doing? Oh, yeah, nice to meet you. We can't <laughs> ignore the snail in the room. <laughs> Look at that. How do you describe what you do? Uh, the insect circus, in all, all ways. We have a museum and also a show. The museum used to be in an old Bedford lorry. Yeah. And it's now been installed in a garage. But the snail goes out. It's going out to a wedding this weekend. A wedding? Is it getting married? What's this? <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> was, somebody saw it a somewhere giant slug that it's she true. wants to be it wants to arrive at the oh, right. it's a church or, or not but she wants to arrive on a snail the lady's sitting up the, the bride is going to sit the bride on the snail. is going to sit on the snail there's a we have a little throne that goes on the top why wouldn't you yeah normally i'd go to you know an, an antique fair an antique center a dealer a salvage yard an auction and i know roughly i'm going to be buying some furniture or some lighting or some decoration paintings i really have no clue today I don't know what we're going to find. And these are, the, these are the best calls. These are the most exciting, the most interesting, the most diverse, and where you can really find things that nobody's ever seen before. In here, you can see exactly what it is. I, I'm, I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Yeah, <laughs> very I'm intrigued. much so. Oh. So. Oh, wow. Wasn't expecting that. No, no. How accurate do you have to be with the whip with the insects? <laughs> They, well, the, um, as, you, as you see, as you go around, the insects are not necessarily as small as you think they might be. Incredible. So, I mean, how long has it taken you to put all this together? Because I can see there's some that you've reimagined and then there's some that is real. So, so it's it, all sorts of stuff. Repurposed. Yeah, they're repurposed bits. Uh, but they've all, had, they've all been given a little twist. Mark is a true one-off. He's done something that can only be described as a pure and whole piece of art. I love this. You've got this, you've got <laughs> a, a six-armed <laughs> Yeah, there's a story about it. In, um, ants had to be costumed at a certain time in history because of uh, not to be allowed naked on stage. <laughs> <laughs> He's taken a perception of something that we have and flipped it completely on its back. He's done it in such a way it's clever, interesting art that makes you think and then he's gone all the way through so you almost believe it can Maybe we fire yeah. this one up the big one does. yeah this the one grand does. finale yeah or like the little magnetic bugs bouncing around in the in middle in the middle how oh, well spotted 
Did you build this? Yeah. Uh, so I, had, I, I made what I couldn't source. It's an absolutely wonderful thing. So we've got the wasp tamer. Yeah, it's a bit scary, that one, if you're not, if you're not a wasp fan. Oh, my God. These are great. And it's just a joy to watch and see what he's done. You did this. Yeah. That's superb. Well, thank you. I li like the uh, boycott the insect circus by the performing insect and mollusk defence league. <laughs> That's brilliant. You've got, have you got a background in sort of sign writing or lithograph or something like that, have you? It's graphics oh. training. It's genuinely brilliant. Well, thank you. Nuts, but brilliant. <laughs> it's really good. And he's taken, even with his different posters from the different eras, he's got all of the, t the letter types and the, and the paper and the colours correct and just all of it. I mean, and the time it's take, it takes to do this is vast. It's a huge amount of time. And he's stained and some are printed and some are painted. And it's, it, 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 it's blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind what, what he's done here. I should imagine there's not anything for sale here, but there's one thing that I'd really... Yeah. I'm itching, but there's one thing on a personal okay. note. If you imagine fleas to be the scale they would be for... Are they a dog size? World, they're a small dog size. Small it's dog like, size. Having, like a Jack Russell. So it, back in the day, when the, when the insect circuses were touring, every, every trailer, caravan, would have one of these on the door. It's just a kind of a insect circus traveller's sign. Could I buy it? Yeah. I'd really, really like to buy it. I just want a memento of, of this. There's the only three things in the corner there that haven't been screwed to the wall, and one of them is a no fleas, please. I'm stood with the artist who made it. He's told me where he's put it and what he's done with it. That's how to buy it. It's worth bugger all. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's worth 50 quid to me. Excellent. Sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's, that's not for sale. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's, going, going, home. that's going home. That's just... It's just one. Ham and Har. Come on, then. More. More fleas. Right, so in here, yeah, we've got a uh, few bits that I've pulled out. <gasps> Ooh! Ooh! I bought this from a friend who um, deals in antiques. Paid a stupid amount for it. Yeah. Because I just fell in love with it. But I've had nowhere to put it. I'll show you this bit. Wow. And then you turn it around, it's all two, 240 volts by the looks. That's fantastic. I'd just buy that if I could. Oh, my God. <laughs> just don't, don't, don't. It's no one's Oh, man. There's a blanket on the table, and me being me, nosy, I lifted the blanket, and underneath it, my eyes, like, lit up, and I saw a model of a, of a fairground ride of some gallopers, and they were in the form of lions and elephants and camels and all sorts of things. And then Mark lifts out of the box the frontage for a ghost train model. I literally can't believe what I'm seeing. It's magic. This is it. This is the thing I'm always looking for. It combines everything I love in this part of the antiques and art world, which is showman art, sideshow, folk art, outsider art, scratch built. It's got it all. This skillfully hand-painted collection of wood and metal fairground models has been signed by one Raymond Green of Lydney, Gloucester. Possibly an amateur enthusiast working in the 1930s. Although incomplete, the set comprises a large Gallopers roundabout, a Noah's Ark and a ghost train, which would once have been powered with electric motors. After restoration, the collection could fetch around £2,500. This is the sort of stuff, God, I love. Thank you so very much. What, what do you want for it? I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one to price. It's a tricky one to price. Near Bury St Edmunds, Drew's overcome with excitement. This is the sort of stuff, God, I love so much. It's a cookie collection of fairground automata from the 1930s. It's a, it's a tricky one to price. It's a tricky one to price. <sighs> All of it. Um, £1,400. You sure about that? Yeah. I'd be very, very happy. <laughs>
I'd be happy to buy it. Well, Deal? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. This is the stuff that really gets me excited. I Wonderful. Just, I just adore it. Now, I remember going to the first fairground on the old donkey field in Tlandidno when I was a kid, when I was about seven or eight, and I was blown away. And imagine the person that created the ghost train. Say we're in rural Suffolk and that turns up with a 20-foot tall skull and flashing lights on the front. It's going to have an effect on you. When an object or a collection of objects can make you feel a certain way, it's really something quite magical, isn't it? Garage done. It's time for Drew and T to head inside for a nose around Mark's cottage. Did to come in? Yes, yes, yes. In the inner sanctum. I love your house. It's great. Yeah. Um, I love your paintings. Those are early, early, my early pictures. Did you do those? Yeah. In the 80s. God, they're good. Oh, wow. What a great room. So most, mostly <gasps> what's in here. Look at these. Those are, yeah, those are the originals. <gasps> they're great. So, I'm interested in anything you've got because your eye's so damn good. That. That's great. Look at this little chap here. Oh, yeah. What do you want? Look at him, you're not going to mess with him, are you? There's a really wonderful photograph of a, of a boys' rugby team and their little black and white stripes and their big leather boots on. Then it starts to dawn on me that the age of this photograph and the age of those boys means they probably were the age when the First World War kicked off. They were at an age to fight without them knowing. But just as a piece of wall art, I adore it. I really like that. Thirty pounds? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Do that. Deal. Thank you. Have you ever heard of a 19th century character called Little Titch? Yes, I have. Recently, actually. Only heard about him recently. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, I don't think these are Little Titches. But they're in the style of. And they are a pair of shoes. Ooh. I think that they were uh, somewhere up in the northwest. I think it was. Yeah. Uh, there was a not clog dancing, but there was this sort of like tap dancing. I don't know. Yeah, how do you, I don't know how you dance in them without you doing yourself harm. Oh, I don't know what size they are even. <laughs> you gonna have a go? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you gonna get your foot in there? Like a glove. Look at that. Look at that. Cinderella. I will go to the ball. <laughs> hey? They literally fit like a glove. They were made for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what you did, you know. Uh, maybe, yeah. And then you flipped up on them, maybe. These late 19th or early 20th century English leather stage shoes with large pine board soles were most likely inspired by musical artist Harry Ralph, better known as Little Titch. Known as flap shoes, they were used to beat out rhythms by slapping the feet heavily on the floor, whilst the elongated ends kept the performer balanced when leaning forward at 45 degrees for comic effect. The pair could be worth around 200 pounds. What do you want from them? I've no idea. Are they worth 250? No. Yeah. They're no. not. Are they worth 200 pushing it? They're definitely worth 150. Yeah. So I'll give you 100 pounds for them. I'd be very happy. Happy? Yeah, All right. absolutely. On that scale of really weird things I've bought. Yeah. This is right up there. Oh, is it? Excellent. <laughs> I'm pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put some nice old laces on them, give them a little bit of a clean, try and do some homework on them, go from there. But they're certainly different. But for £100, I'll take a chance. It's just magic. It's magic. Mark has created this little haven for himself. I think his art is not just good, it's exemplary and it's really good fun. I love everything that he does. He's my new hero. The buys have been great, but I think the find of the day has been Mark and his world. Well, it was, it's been having wonderful having Drew and T. Yeah, I couldn't have wished for a better day, I don't think. And also managed to sell him something that neither of us really knew what value they were. The shoes, it was the shoes, I thought. That's made my day, I think, selling those. All sorted. Yep. Mark, thank you so much for today. It's been oh, thank you. Yeah, it's absolute, been, brilliant been an absolute day. pleasure for yeah. both of us. It really has. Brilliant day. See you thank soon. You. Thank right. you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. I think Mark is my new favourite person. You know, artistically, incredible. Yeah, oh, his work's amazing.
where they've been for many years, lots of them. Hello. Drew, how are you? How are you Hi. doing? Oh, yeah, nice to meet you. We can't <laughs> ignore the snail in the room. <laughs> Look at that. How do you describe what you do? Uh, the insect circus, in all, all ways. We have a museum and also a show. The museum used to be in an old Bedford lorry. Yeah. And it's now been installed in a garage. But the snail goes out. It's going out to a wedding this weekend. A wedding? Is it getting married? What's this? <laughs> somebody, <laughs> was, somebody saw it somewhere. A giant slug that it's... She wants to, be, wants to arrive at the... Oh, right. back to church or, or not, but she wants to arrive on a snail. The lady's sitting on... The, the bride is going to sit bride on the snail. The bride is going to sit on the snail. There's a, we have a little throne that goes on the top. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Normally, I'd go to, you know, an, an antique fair, an antique centre, a dealer, a salvage yard, an auction, and I know, roughly, I'm going to be buying some furniture or some lighting or some decoration paintings. I really have no clue today. I don't know what we're going to find. And these are the, these are the best calls. These are the most exciting, the most interesting, the most diverse, and where you can really find things that nobody's ever seen before. In here, you can see exactly what it is. I, I'm, I, I'm intrigued. Yeah, <laughs> I'm very intrigued. much so. Oh! So... Oh, wow! Wasn't expecting that. No, no. How accurate do you have to be with the whip with the insects? <laughs> there will be, um, <laughs> as you... As you see, as you go around, the insects are not necessarily as small as you think they might be. Incredible. So, I mean, how long has it taken you to put all this together? Because I can see there's some that you've reimagined and then there's some that is real. So, so it's, it's all sorts of stuff. Repurposed. Yeah, they're repurposed bits. Uh, but they've all, had, they've all been given a little twist. Mark is a true one-off. He's done something that can only be described as a pure and whole piece of art. 